Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. In today's video we're going to be making some handles for my consumables cabinet. Now if you're new to my channel you may not have seen the video where I made these drawers but essentially these drawers are where I keep all of my consumables. For instance, this top drawer here is full of all of these black screws. There's about 6,000 of them in here and I pretty much keep all of my screws in here. I've got biscuits and some other random bits and pieces here and there. So what I want to do is I want to head over to my 3D printer and I want to make some drawer pulls that I can put on here that will actually display uh, what is inside of each drawer instead of having to guess all the time. All right, so now we're in Fusion 360 and we want to design our drawer pool. So we're going to make a sketch on the bottom plane and make a rectangle. Now my thinnest drawer is 80 millimeters wide. So I'm going to go 60 millimeters. That gives me a centimeter either side. And then for the height, we're going to go 40 millimeters. I think that's a pretty good size for uh, what we're looking for. Now I'm going to fill it all the corners and just to add a little bit of a round over, we'll go three mil. Now we can extrude this up. Uh, let's go five mil because the letters are actually going to be sunken in two mil. Now we want to make a pull. So we're gonna make a new sketch on the side plane and we're going to come up and we're going to create a spline and let's go about there, bring it around. Yep, and we'll finish that off there. Now we can come up to extrude, change it to thin extrude and select this line. And then we're gonna come across, uh, let's have a look. Let's go, we'll go 15 mil. Now I am keeping in mind while I make this that this has to be 3D printed. So obviously the bigger I make certain things like the width of the pool and all that, that's gonna add time to how long it takes to print, which if it was just one thing, isn't gonna be that much. But once you start printing a lot, it's gonna add a lot of time. So we're gonna save that as a new body and click okay. So now we're gonna click press pull and we're gonna select this face. Let's bring it out, uh, say four mil. Yeah, four mil looks all right. And then we're gonna create a new sketch on this side here. Now we're gonna create a new spline, this bottom corner here. And we'll come up to uh, what, about there halfway. And then we'll come down on this side to about there. Uh, we can finish that and then we can move these dots around to where we like. All right, now we can finish that sketch, come up here and click extrude. Rotate this around so you can see what I'm doing. And then we're just going to cut that part away and hit enter. So now we're left with like this bit more of a design rather than just one continuous thickness the whole way. And then one last thing that we need to do is we need to come up to fill it. We're going to select this line here and this line here. And we're going to come in until it rounds over, which looks like it's 7.5 mil. Okay. So now we have our pool and we have our plate. What we want to do is we want to move our pool. So we can go point to point. Our selection is going to be this body. Our origin point is going to be this front line here. And we want to move it to the center up here. And then hit OK. And now we have a plate with a pool, which looks pretty cool. Now to mount these plates, I'm going to be using some screws. So we're going to create a new sketch on top here and along the middle with a construction line, we're going to run a line across the center and then we want to run another line on each side that comes in five millimeters. And essentially that just gave us uh, some points of where we want our holes to be. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna create some holes. We're going to click from a sketch. Our hole top, we want to be countersunk, hole, tap type is going to be simple and our drill point is going to be flat and then we can select our two dots here. Now we want to change some measurements here obviously 
Uh, we know that this top one here, if we get one of our screws, so I'm using these 3.5 millimeter, uh, 16 millimeter long screws. And the top head is about seven millimeters wide. So we can change that to seven. This bottom part is, should be 3.5 I assume. 3.5, that's it. So let's go four to give us a little bit of extra space. And length doesn't matter. And degree is going to be 90 and click. Okay, so now we have two little countersunk holes. And that right there is pretty much a finished plate. Now I am gonna have this STL file available and where you can get that is my new Patreon. Yes, you heard that right. I now have a Patreon. I primarily am going to be using Patreon to share my STL files and anyone who signs up at any level over there will get access to all of my STL files. Now, I plan on doing a lot more 3D printer videos. I mean, there's gonna be a full series on this fixing up my workshop with 3D prints and all of those STL files will also be available to my Patreons. I also do plan to expand out of 3D printing for the workshop later on, but for now, this is what I'm working on. Now, if you would like to join my Patreon and get access to all of my files, I will have links down below for that. So as I said, these STL files will be available on my Patreon and I'm going to be having a couple of different versions. So this plate here is pretty well done. Now this version is essentially done. You can write on it, or if you have a Cricut like I do, you could print your own labels, put them on there. And that sort of gives you the uh, availability to just put a blank plate on for now and then add on something later if you have empty drawers and all that sort of stuff. But I want to take this a little bit further and I want to create uh, some 3D printed letters that are going to be embedded inside of the plate for the drawers that I have. So now I want to create a construction line that I can go off. Now in between these two holes, I have roughly 43 millimeters. So let's come in three millimeters on each side. Come in three and we'll come in three. Yep. And then we'll also come in three from the top. So 17. Okay, now we want to bring a line across from here and we're going to go 12. Now we can come up to create and click on text. And then we can bring this down and make a box. So now what we want to do is my top drawer is full of 20 millimeter black screws. We're going to bring our height down, uh, so six. All right, I want to make it centered and align in the middle. When you get my files, you're going to get my STL files and I'll also provide the Fusion 360 files as well. And we are going to extrude the letters. And we're going to go minus two because we want them to be embedded two millimeters into the plate. We're going to turn that sketch back on. Now that we've got that selected again, we're going to extrude those letters again and we're going to come up four millimeters and make sure that it's a new body. When you get your file, all you need to do is come in to this text document here, double click. That's going to bring it up. I don't know why it keeps going upside down, but we're gonna turn it up the right way. And then all you're gonna do is just double click the letters and change this to whatever you want. So I could just make it make a Mackie. Hit okay, finish sketch and you will now see that the letters have changed. So that's pretty much it now. We now need to create our files to send off to Cura. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually select all these bodies and I'm going to actually move them across so they're out of the way. Now you'll actually notice that they will stay where they are now and when you change that text sketch they will still stay separated which is what we need 
So what I want to do now is I want to come up to body. I'm going to select them all. And again, I'm going to press V for visibility to turn them off. And then we're going to come up to our file up here and we're going to click export. Make sure we want to export and not 3D print because the problem with 3D print is you can only select one body. We're going to change it to STL file. I'm going to change this to draw pool uh, plate. 20, 20 millimeter black screws. And then we click export. And now what we want to do is we're going to select everything. Click V again for visibility. That's going to reverse what has been selected. So the plate and the handle are now hidden and the letters are good. So now we can come up to file, export again. We're going to go draw pull letters. 20 millimeter black screws, STL file again to the desktop and we can export that one. Okay, so I have all of my draw pools here all printed and I have the letters to go in. Unfortunately, I didn't think about it when designing and I didn't offset the size of the letters to make them sure that they fit in properly and because they're printed the exact same size they're just never going to fit so i honestly can't be bothered to go in and redesign and reprint everything again so i'm not going to be using the letters my next step was or well, my next idea was that i was going to fill these with epoxy but then i held one up and honestly you don't really need the insets at all anyway the the two millimeter depth gives it enough of a shadow that the letters actually stand out really well like that so you could fill it with epoxy if you wanted to but honestly it's not really that big of a deal now as i said with patreon you are going to get access to my stl files you also will have the uh fusion 360 files as well so if someone wants to go through and fix what i didn't do then have fun with that but for my purpose, I honestly just can't be bothered. And I think they actually look pretty good without the black in there anyway. So let's get these all mounted to all the drawers and we can pull off these old drawer pulls that you can see that a lot of them have snapped off anyway uh, over the years. So we're going to replace these. All right, so the drawer pulls are finished and put on the drawers. I also went along and sanded all the drawers as well because there was all glue residue from the previous handles and uh, and all that. So gave them a quick sand, put the handles back on, and I think they came out really good. Now, I don't know if, it, if you can pick it up on camera, but you may notice that a couple, uh, the nine to be exact, the handle actually stops about halfway up. And that is because I left the print overnight and it ran out of filament. Oh, well, these things happen and it's a long print, so I didn't really want to do it again. And the handles, like, they still work fine. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, they look uh, really good. They turned out really good. It's a little bit of a shame that the letters didn't fit, but honestly, you can easily read what it says, and I think they turned out really good. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now also, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Not only will you be supporting me and this massive passion that I have for this channel, but you'll also get access to all my STL files, Fusion 360 files for all of my 3D prints, including the draw pools and including the hooks that I made for the previous video of fixing up this shop. And I do have a huge amount of 3D prints on the way. I'm currently, sneak peek, for those that wanna stick around this far through the video, I'm currently printing a grid system for my workbench for these uh, little uh, holders for like all my assortment and everything. And I'm gonna be making custom holders for absolutely everything that's in my workbench, socket hold, sockets and, and all that sort of stuff. And all of those files will be available to my Patreons as well. This was just a test print and uh, yeah, I'm a little bit of refining to do but pretty happy with how these are turning out. So as I said, if you do want to get access to those files, it's patreon.com forward slash maker Mackie. 
and I will see you next time.